blessings, and one of the things I enjoy doing the most is really working with students. Um, and when I left higher education after spending 16 years, I, I joined Zen so that I would be able to help many more students than I ever could at one particular institution. Um, but I have worked at five different universities, as Rob said. Most recently, I was the director of admission at Stanford. And I also was responsible for the application review process at Stanford, at Berkeley, at Chapel Hill, and at the University of Pittsburgh. And so I've had a lot of experience reading essays, um, working with our staff to really understand how to evaluate an essay, um, both from the perspective of what the student would bring to the institution, but also what the institution could also do to benefit the student by being admitted to the university. And so the essay piece of the application for me was the most compelling, most exciting part of reading any single application that a student presented. Uh, particularly when I was at Stanford where we had an admit rate less than 7%, the essay was the piece in the application that really made a student stand out. And when the admissions process would start, we would have training to talk about how to evaluate the essay, um, looking at things from how a student presented themselves, the stories that they told, um, the grammar uh, in the particular essay, all of those things went into the evaluation process. And so the admission office would become very passionate about reading these applications and really interested in learning more about the individual student. Um, at every institution that I was involved with, and in many institutions across the country, the review process is not only just an evaluation of the application, but there's also a discussion that happens with, with each individual application. So at Stanford, for example, um, we would have readers that would evaluate the application. Um, there would be one reader that would evaluate the application. They would then send that on to a second reader. And then that application would be brought up for review in a committee style process. And so at that particular time, what would happen is that admission officer who initially evaluated the application would really become the advocate for the student. And so they were able to become a better advocate for the student when they were able to convey messages that were given to them through the application, particularly through the essay. And so the essay really became that opportunity for a student to really have an interview with an admission officer and really tell them about something um, that was really of interest to them while answering the questions that were presented uh, to the student through the common application or the supplement or when I was at the University of California through the University of California application process. It was just a way in which a student could bring something to light um, that was not addressed somewhere else in the application. And so the essay is really your opportunity to have that conversation with the admission office, office to really bring to light something that is of, of importance to you. And so when Peggy starts to talk about a lot of the different ways in which you can write a compelling essay, there's a couple of things that I would really like you to think about as you start to think about crafting your own essay um, or your own personal statement for college admission this year or in years to come. The first is making sure that when you write about something, be very aware if it is going to be a shared experience. And when I say shared experience, I think of students who write oftentimes about the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts or a mission trip or they write about a sporting activity, they're the captain of a team or they got kicked off a team and they got back on the team. Um, these are a lot of experiences that students all across the country, all around the world have. And it's absolutely fine to write about shared experiences, but what's important is really the takeaway that you have from that experience. And when I say that, just think of how an admission officer would go into that admissions committee setting that I just mentioned and talk about the student. Um, if they were going in and said, okay, this student, Sally, was involved in sports, uh, she was the captain of the team, I mean, she won the, the state championship, and that's really all they could talk about. Or they could talk about Sally, who went on the basketball team, who was the captain, they won the state championship, and she took that level of leadership and did something else in her school. And so it's not necessarily about the experience it, itself, but it's more about the takeaway and the impact that that experience had. Um, another common essay that a lot of students would write about would be a, the influential person in their life, um, which we always refer to as the grandfather essay. And this is something that a lot of college admission officers would, will ask for. They will ask for, write something about an influential person in your life. And so it's absolutely appropriate to write about this, but what you want to stay away from is really just spending so much time writing about that person 
that at the end of the essay, all the admission officer knows is that I really want to admit your grandfather to our institution because they were so influential. Um, what you want them to do is find that there was an impact that your grandfather had or your mother had or your aunt or your coach or your teacher. Uh, but at the end of it, this is what you also saw in yourself, and this is what it caused you to do. So again, thinking about that impact and being able to convey that to the admission officers so when they go into that committee or they think about admitting you versus another individual student who's applying, that they can have that takeaway and really makes you unique in that process. So when you think about the essay, it's really about telling your story. It's really about conveying to the admission office really who you are as an individual um, and really thinking about what makes you special. Um, and so a lot of students have things in their lives and, and admission officers don't really expect 17-year-old students who are applying to universities to have these huge, impactful, life-changing events always, um, but just something that really makes you you. Um, I do work with a couple of students um, throughout the year and they ask for advice on how to write effective essays. And I'm working with one particular student right now who wants to write about experiences she had with basketball. And that she was kicked off the team, not kicked off the team, she didn't make the team in the ninth grade. And instead of saying, okay, I'm just going to move on and do something else, she still had a passion for basketball. And so she wrote about going and coaching basketball um, for her uh, for a middle school league that she had within her school district. The other option that she had is that she could write about this nonprofit that she works with and how involved she got with the nonprofit and she actually had raised a significant amount of money. Um, she took this to write her own blog and to go and do additional things as a result of working with this nonprofit um, for her 10th and 11th grade year. And my suggestion back to her was that the nonprofit essay was a little bit more impactful because it really made her stand out because the other one could have been more of a shared experience that a lot of other students have. So as I say that, think about yourself, think about um, the things that you've done, and think about how you can best convey your, to the admission office who you are as an individual. I will be back at the end of the conversation uh, to answer questions that any of you may have, but at this time I'm going to turn this over to Peggy, and she's going to walk you through a lot of the great work that she's done throughout her career with students. Well, good evening, I think, or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Certainly, this is the time of year when my students are bringing me drafts of their essays every day, and we're spending a lot of time on the write and rewrite process that I will be talking about. But we always start the process by thinking about why colleges want an essay. And Bob has actually... Um, Peggy, I think we lost you. Hi, this is Peggy Hawk from the Pinewood School in California, where it's still late in the afternoon. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit at first about why colleges want the essay in the first place, given that it takes a lot of time for you to write it and a lot of time for you, for them to read it. And I think Bob gave you a good sense of that. They really want to know who you are. I like to use a quote from Virginia Woolf, which I will paraphrase here. But Virginia Woolf said that events have little meaning until we know to whom they happened. So lots of students have listed similar things on their applications. Those are the events. That, those are events that have already happened. The way to convince the college to care about you is to use your essay to distinguish your experience of those events from others who have had those shared experiences. This is the only part of the application that is still under your control. Your grades, for the most part, are water under the bridge. I don't think you're going to have, most of you, an earth-shattering life experience in the next few weeks. Your teachers are already writing your letters of recommendation, so it is unlikely that an academic um, experience right now is going to dramatically affect their content. But the, the essay is entirely under your control, and I'm hoping that you will seize this opportunity 
and use it perhaps to make a difference in the admissions process for you. When colleges go to committee, they have eliminated some applications that just didn't meet the standard for um, grades and test scores that they are looking for. A few students will be admitted without going to committee because they have some outstanding qualification that is rare and unusual. But the committee is going to sit down and read the essays from a number of students any one of whom would fit the college's academic profile. And from those, they are going to choose who to admit in order to build a community. They're going to look from that group to find those who are going to add the most to their campus community, both in and out of the classroom. If everyone that they admitted was the same, it would be boring. So there is no formula for the story that you're going to tell. Colleges need listeners, they need talkers, they need leaders, they need worker bees. You are going to tell a story which helps them understand who you are and how you are different from others who have shared similar experiences. You cannot try to guess who the college is looking for, whether they need more oboe players or more students from Maryland. But you can do your best to explain something genuine about who you are that distinguishes you from all of those other students. The vast majority of essays end up being neutral in the admissions process. A colleague calls them so what essays. The college will read the essay and say, so what? This is just another kid who played soccer. Don't let your essay be a so what essay. Take advantage of this opportunity to advance your application. All right, so you get the idea that you're going to write a story that only you can tell. You're going to use your, you're going to, you're going to make yourself distinctive, but you're still looking at a blank piece of paper and you still don't know how to start. So here's the strategy that, that works best for my students. The first thing that I would want you to do is to write a list of 15 to 20 words or phrases that, that can be used to describe you. Take the time to actually sit down and write the numbers from 1 to 20 and fill in those blanks with descriptive phrases or words. Think of who you are in your family. Think of the words your mom would use when she's not mad at you. Think of who you are at school. What do your teachers say about you if they write comments on your report card? What, do your friend, what would your friends say about you? Why do they like to hang out with you? Please, you want to use positive phrases. My students always say, can I write negative phrases? Negative phrases are not going to help you get into the colleges that you're applying to. So think about, do you love sports? Maybe you're athletic. Are you the person that everyone goes to when they need a poster or a t-shirt design? Perhaps you're artistic. Are you a good lister? listener? Are you the shoulder to cry on? Are you the sounding board when friends are not quite sure what to do in a social situation? Perhaps you're empathetic. When you have a difficult math problem or a chemistry lab to analyze, are you the student who will work at it and work at it and work at it until you get it? Perhaps you're best described as determined. Are you, do you spend your free time playing the piano, the violin, the electric guitar, singing in the shower? Perhaps you're musical. Do you spend free time helping your grandparents or caring for younger siblings? Or are you the behind the scenes worker for all the student council events, the one who can be counted on to set up or clean up? Perhaps you're described, you can be described as responsible. Are you fascinated by numbers, by poetry, by how the brain works, by learning new computer programs? Perhaps you are curious. Once you have your list of 15 to 20 words, then you need to figure out what the stories are that you can use to show these aspects of you. But first of all, you need to take a look at that list and see what the recurring themes are. Because in any list of 15 to 20 words, usually you can find four or five, um, what I call umbrella words, that, that among them will take care of all of the 20 words. So you want to take those 20 words and sort them into categories 
and then find a word that describes each of those categories. Then the next step, now you've got about four or five words that really among them should capture your strengths. And now you need to start thinking about the stories. So next to each of those words, what I would want you to do is to jot down an anecdote of a, a brief story, just a line that reminds you of a time when you gave evidence of that aspect of who you are. So think about what are the key points in your journey. Who have you influenced? What are the stories from your life that you might tell your children and grandchildren? What are the stories that you tell your grandmother when she comes to visit? What are the stories that your mother tells about you? What are the family stories that really give a sense of who you are? And then you're going to have to take a look at each of those stories and start to figure out which one could demonstrate more than one of those four or five umbrella words. Because a good essay is going to prove more than one key aspect of your character. And also, you want your story to show the college something about who you are intellectually or who you are that's going to contribute to the quality of the, of the community of students who all live together. So now you're going to choose one story from, from the anecdotes that you listed. You, you, you're going to pull out a blank piece of paper. And remember, you're going to have a tape of this audio later, so you can go back and do this. And at the top of the piece of the paper, you will write the word or words that you want your anecdote to prove about you. Then what you need to do is set a timer and start writing for 10 minutes without stopping. Just tell the story. Just spit it out. Don't second guess yourself. Don't edit it. Just write from the heart. At the end of that, you might have a story that you can develop to your final essay. You might not, but you'll have, at least you'll have words on paper. You will have organized your thoughts about who you are. And very often, you will have the start of a story that can be developed into a powerful and, a, and effective application essay or personal statement. Just like any good writing, you're going to need to do some writing, rewriting, and revising. So let's take a look at some guidelines for essays that work. The first one is that you're going to have to write in the first person. So this is a first person narrative. It's in your own voice. And it is not like academic writing. It is not the five paragraph English essay. It is in a speaking voice. So you're going to need to read your draft out loud. Does it sound like you talking? If it doesn't, you did not write it in the first person. Remember, the reader should feel as if they're seeing this event through your eyes. Is your story a cliche? Beware of the McGessay. Please do not write the essay that says, I practiced all summer and made the varsity team. Or the essay that says, our team vowed to make the championship and we all worked, so we were proud even though we lost the final game. Or the common one in California, on my service trip to wherever, I was amazed to find how happy people are even though they have nothing. These may well be important experiences in your life, and you may well choose to write about those events. But when you do that, you're going to have to capture, as, as Bob said, the essence of that event and its impact on you. Not just tell the story of the shared experience in a way that anyone could have experienced it. So you're going to have to find what was unique about your experience. And you're going to have to use that story to prove something about who you are. How did you navigate the service trip? Were you the one who kept everyone calm and convinced your group to continue after the storm? Were you the person on the sports team who bridged the cliques, brought the new players into the fold? Or maybe, as with Bob's student, the soccer essay is not the best story to tell. Perhaps there's another story from your life that would do a better job of providing the reader with insights into who you are. Remember, this is an 
an opportunity um, for you to share something that cannot be found elsewhere on the application. You need to be thinking about who your reader is. So once you make sure that the, the, the essay helps the reader learn something new about you, you have to make sure that it's an essay that will not put the reader to sleep. College admissions officers read essays from early morning till late at night. And they're only going to give you a couple of minutes, a couple of sentences, probably not a couple of minutes, probably two or three sentences before either their eyes will glaze over and they will lose interest and they will not gain anything from your essay, or before they will perk up and be interested in who you are. Once you ca capture an opening, then you need to be worried about how you will leave the reader at the end. Often, I find that students don't know how to end, and they just kind of dribble off. So then, I will say, just take out the last sentence or two. Just end. Don't um, wander off at the, at the end. Here are some specific tips that will help you get to that essay that is not a cliche, that helps the reader to learn something more about you, that wakes up the reader at the beginning and leaves the reader satisfied at the end. First, as I said before, you're going to write in your natural speaking voice. However, you don't want to write in the shorthand language that you use when speaking to your buddies at school. You want to write as if you were speaking to your favorite aunt or uncle. So write as if you're telling the story to an adult with whom you are comfortable. If English is not your first language, your story is going to have the rhythm of the way you actually speak English. It should be basically grammatically correct, but it's not going to have the same rhythm of a native English speaker. And that's the way it should be. It should represent you when you are speaking with the best English grammar that you have. Don't use the source words, what words. One friend of mine in admission said that she was going to deny any student who used the word plethora that year because she was so tired of hearing it. It must have been the word of the year. Use the words that you normally use in speaking. When you go find a word from the thesaurus and stick it into a sentence, it makes the reader groan and roll their eyes and your writing begins to lose credibility. You want to use language that that shows your actions. You want, to, you want the reader to see you in action, and you want that action to show the reader what you want them to learn about you. So you're not going to say, I am a really hard worker. You're going to find a story that shows the reader how determined you are. What are the devices that you use? You have, I, many of you have had in English, you've talked about show, not tell writing. So let's, let's review what the techniques are that turn something from telling to showing. First of all, you need to use vivid details. You need to use sensory language. And you use dialogue. Dialogue puts the reader in the situation with you. You use details to help the reader feel like they are standing there with you at the beach or at the court or sitting with you around the kitchen table. So instead of saying, although I was afraid of the water, I waded into the surf to grab my baby cousin, you say, my feet burned as I sank into the dry sand. The white foamy waves rolled over Tommy's feet as he let out high pitched squeals of joy and toddled toward the drop off. The waves cooled my blistered feet as I entered the water and my fear for him overcame my fear of the waves. When you write that way, the reader is right there with you, worried about the little child headed for drowning in the surf. It is those details that make the story your own. It's those details and specifics that let the reader begin to know who you are. So after you write your first draft, because your first draft is not going to have those details, you go back and you say, hmm, if I'm in a room, how is the lighting? Who's there? What are they saying? You go back and you put in the smells, the sights, the sounds, and the textures of the events. And then you read it out loud again. And it's an entirely different story that is much more interesting. 
you have to know what it is that you want the reader to know about you before you begin. And that is why I really urge you to write at the top of the story of the page the point of the story before you get started. Remember, we don't want you to write those so what essays. You have to prove what it is that you want the leader, the reader to learn. And you have to remember that no matter how vivid you, vividly your language paints the scene, your story is not going to help your application if it doesn't teach the reader something new about you. If you tell the reader how friendly you are or how passionate you are about the use of numbers and sports, find a story that will prove it. The essay does not have to say that you learned a big lesson. If you did, say so. But lots of us can tell compelling stories that make people want to get to know us that don't involve compelling lessons. Great essays don't always need a moral. So you need to stay real. Remember that readers have great BS meters. So present your true, genuine, best self. Think about the everyday you at your best. That's who the college wants to get to know. Back to the satisfying opener. Don't put the reader to sleep in the first two sentences. Find what your English teacher calls a grabber. You might be able to write a compelling story that's too personal. Be aware of that. Some stories are just not appropriate to tell to people who you don't know. Be careful about writing about mental health struggles or the intimate details of a devastating experience. If you're considering writing about a topic that might be painful for the reader to experience through your eyes, check in with your school counselor and ask your school counselor whether this is an appropriate story to share with the colleges. You want the essay to say a lot about you, but you don't want it to say to the reader that you're not careful about spelling and punctuation. So do have someone proofread it for you. Find a teacher or a counselor, but don't let the proofreader take your voice out of the essay. No one else should be writing sentences in your essay. Too many times a powerful essay in a student's voice has been ruined by a parent or family friend who was admitted to some impressive university a number of years ago and who has taken to editing the student's work because they are sure they know what colleges want. Many a time I've read a wonderful early draft of an essay written by a student, and then it comes back to me, and the 17-year-old voice is gone, and I feel like I'm reading a corporate communication, and I'll say, what happened here? And they'll say, well, my uncle went to some Ivy League university, and he said it should sound like this. No, it needs to sound like you. The big worry this year for students is, oh my goodness, we have new prompts to write to for the common application. There aren't models that I can work from. How do I know how to approach these new questions? Well, first of all, I actually think it's to your benefit that there are new questions and there are no models. First of all, the colleges are not bored with reading essays to this topic. And secondly, it makes it easier for you to write your story in your voice when you are not looking at models. So again, the first thing you need to do is to decide what do you want the college to know about you? Here you have an opportunity to paint the picture of who you are. Figure out what are your most com important compelling characteristics. Who are you at your best? And then look at the prompts. So decide first what you want the colleges to know about you. And then figure out which of the questions lets you tell the story that you want to tell. You are in control here. So let's look at those, let's, let's analyze, take apart those questions and see what they're really asking you. Because really what you have are six opportunities to show who you are. They're simply designed to provide a framework for you to find a story. The first prompt says that some students have a background or story that is so central to their identity that they believe their application would be incomplete without it. If this sounds like you, then please share your story. So remember the important words here. There's something in your background. 
there's a story that goes with that background. The story shows something about your identity. And you feel like understanding who you are would be incomplete without this story. And we're going to come back to what, how do you use that um, to show something about you. The second prompt says, recount an incident or time when you experienced failure. How did it affect you? And what lessons did you learn? And do note here that failure can be, does not have to be you failed a class. Failure can be on a small scale and you can learn a lot from failure on a small scale. So incident, what was the incident? What was going on in your life? What was the failure? Did you fail to make a sports team? Did you not make the chamber ensemble? Or did you fail a test? Really the important aspect of this question is first, what was the effect of that failure on you? And secondly, what did you do about it? What were the lessons that you learned? How are you different as a result of how you responded to that failure? The next possibility, and remember, you're thinking in your mind, what do I want the college to know about me? Which of these prompts will I use to show that? So now you have reflect on a time when you challenged a belief or idea. What prompted you to act? Would you make the same decision again? So your essay is going to have to address that you challenged something, that that something was a belief or idea, you're going to have to address why you chose to act. And then, again, it's what was the result of that action? How did that impact you? Would you make the same decision again? Would you risk that result again? Was that a result that you liked? Or was that a result that you maybe wouldn't risk again? It could be a time when you challenged your parents' beliefs about curfew or when to get a driver's license. It could be when you stood up in class and took the less popular point of view in a debate. Um, there, it could, there's, uh, there are an unlimited number of possibilities here, both big and small. This, this one, describe a place or environment where you are perfectly content. What do you do or experience there? And why is it meaningful to you? I would say that this is becoming the equivalent of the grandfather essay. I'm getting way too many essays about how beautiful my grandfather's farm is and how peaceful it is there and how I love to be there, but they are so what essays. I would love to go to grandpa's farm. It sounds like a great place, but it doesn't make me want to admit the student. So remember that yes, you need to identify the place or environment. You have to identify why you're content there. But what is it that you do or experience there? And most importantly, why is it meaningful to you? What is it about that place that shows me something about what's important to you? So you need to be careful with this essay that the reader learns enough about you and doesn't just fall in love with this place that you have described. And remember that this place doesn't have to be a house or a school. It could be you in the shower singing. It could be you at your music stand. So you can interpret place or environment broadly. And then finally, we have discuss an accomplishment or event, formal or informal, that marked your transition from childhood to adulthood within your culture, community, or family. So again, there has to be an accomplishment or event. It can be formal or informal, but one accomplishment or event. You have to talk about the transition in your experience of who you are. That has to be a transition where you felt more adult than you usually do. And remember that you're going to choose culture or community or family. So you need to focus in on one experience, which could be an experience over days or weeks, but you need to, to narrow this topic. You need to love the story that you tell. If you don't love reading it, the readers, the outside reader is not going to love it either. So take control. Decide what it is that you want to prove to the college about the best of who you are. 
and then figure out which prompt provides the best framework for your story. So I'm going to show how you could take one aspect of you that you wanted to share and you could use any of the prompts to do it. If, let's say that you were a passionate musician and you wanted to show your passion for, for music and for being a, mus a musician. Well, you could write about music as the background central to your identity, prompt number one. Or you might write about the time that you made a big mistake at a concert or were not accepted to an ensemble you auditioned for, or, as I painfully remember from my high school years, the time you panicked at a competition and completely blew the sight reading part. Or, what if you thought you only liked classical music, but you tried a different ensemble and fell in love with jazz? Well, that's, your, that's the um, change in perspective essay. Or, what if the summer music retreats are where you are the most content? Well, there's the place where you are content essay. Or, what about the summer you were asked to teach a younger ensemble? That was the first time that you were asked to be considered the adult in the situation. Any one of those six prompts could allow a student musician to demonstrate leadership, passion, talent, working well with others, intellectual curiosity, or whatever it was that they wanted to use their passion for music to show about themselves. So decide first what it is you want the college to learn about you, and then go and look at the prompts and figure out which one works best for you. My final thoughts for you are to be sure to check the admissions office web pages of the colleges that you are considering, because often they will have excellent about advice about what they are looking for from the essay. Pay particular attention to the supplemental essays colleges are asking for because colleges have in mind their values and what's most important to them when they choose those questions for you to answer. So don't do the supplements at the last minute late at night. That's going to really disadvantage you in the process. And finally, enjoy the writing. A good essay should be a fun story for you to write. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Zinch to monitor any questions that you might have. Great, thanks, Peggy. So now we'll talk everyone to get into the echo. If you have questions, please send them over to me and I'll ask them to Peggy. Or Bob. Or Bob, exactly. All right, first question. Is it very important to stay within the character limit? Yes. First of all, the common application will cut you off. Most applications will cut you off. And you don't want to have your essay end in the middle of a sentence. And think of what that will say to the reader, that you don't know how to follow directions. Perfect. Can you use the same essay for multiple applications or repurpose an essay for all the applications? I certainly advise my students to do that. Um, I, in the world of science, in which I used to work, we used to say never waste a good sentence. If you have thought, if you have carefully crafted paragraphs that say what you want to say, you might reuse them. But do make sure that you are answering the question that has been asked. In those supplemental questions, colleges are going to be very sensitive to whether or not you cared enough about their institution to answer the question they were asking. But very often, you can repurpose essays. Peggy? <laughs> Bob has a comment on that. Yeah, yeah Peggy, no, can you mute your phone between, between sentences? Yeah, I'm not sure if you can hear me. Thank you, Rob, go ahead. Um, I often like dialogue because it pulls the reader right into the story, but the answer to that's going to be um, as different as the story you're telling, but I would say just jump right into the story and run the story by some friends. What, what we do here is we have students share their essays and we ask the peers to put a blue dot where they lose interest. If they put a blue dot right at the beginning, you did not have a grabber. 
Bob, do you have thoughts about that? Oh, I agree with you completely, Peggy. And when you think about it, college admission officers, on average, when I was at Stanford, uh, the admission officers read between 1,500 to 1,800 applications a year. When I was at Berkeley, it was closer to 2,000 applications a year. And so they're reading through application after application. And that interesting first sentence that really has that hook to find out, oh, I wonder what happened here. Um, is always a really good uh, approach to take so that they do really pay close attention to the entire essay and are interested throughout. I love Peggy's idea of putting a blue dot where somebody may lose interest because then it allows you to reframe the entire story so that they keep their attention throughout the entire essay. And remember, you're not going to get to that graph. Oh, oh, you're not uh, going to. Next question. We have a couple of questions on late. Sorry, Peg, if you can be up. First of all, um, the link, the common application, which covers a lot of essays, um, allows 650 words. Another fairly common length is 500 words, but many of the supplemental questions that college, colleges ask are in the 150 to 250 word range. So what you need to do is write the story that you want to write, check the word limit, and then go back and read and say, if I take this out, do I change the meaning? And usually you can cut out a lot of words. The essay will pull the reader through it with more energy and be more effective when shortened. So a good essay is going to take three or four drafts to get the details at the beginning that capture the reader's interest and keep the reader interested and stay within the length. Uh, essays do, don't waste words on a title. Essays should not have a title. And don't restate the question. That's, that's a waste of words. You've checked a box on the application so the reader knows what prompt you're writing to. So don't feel that you have to say the place where I'm most content is. Just get with the story. And finally, there really is no format. You're writing as a storyteller. So the key elements, the only formal, I think, structure would be Pull the reader in with your opening, make them want to know what's going to happen next, and then have some oomph at the end, leaving them wanting kind of more or to know more about this person. Okay, um, I, you know, the, the college wants to hear your voice, so in regards to whether, whether quotes are cliché, um, it is rare that I find that a quote adds to an essay. I would say you only have a limited number of words, you're better off using your words. But that's not an absolute, um, and we'll, we'll let Bob weigh in on that as well, but in general I think the college would rather hear your words. And yes, even if you are below the college's admit profile, they will read your essay. If you go to the trouble of writing it, they will read it. But I have, if you, when you're crafting the list of colleges that you will apply to, you need to think about um, putting the maximum amount of energy into the applications 
that are most likely to yield admission. So my warning would be don't spend all of your time at the beginning writing for colleges where it is highly unlikely that they will admit you and then not have time to do a really good job on the applications that are more likely to be successful. But yes, readers will read the entire application um, even if the academic profile um, is not going to make you admissible to that institution. And then the last question about whether a poor essay on the SAT or ACT makes a really well-crafted application essay look suspicious is it depends. Um, if your English grades are low, um, if it looks, if, if the essay is not consistent with the rest of the picture on the application, then the reader is going to be suspicious. And that's one that Bob should probably weigh in on. Bob, what do you say? Sure, it's an interesting question. Uh, thanks for asking that question. You know, I, I think there is uh, a question that the admission office may have of seeing a score of a four on an SAT supplement or an ACT supplement essay score, um, but they're very different approaches. The approach on the SAT supplement writing or the ACT writing supplement is a very different approach than writing a college essay that you can actually take time with. You can draft, redraft, draft again, pick a different topic, um, and spend a good amount of time perfecting that essay, where in the SAT or the ACT, you have a short period of time to write an essay that's really graded very differently or evaluated very differently than the application for admission. So I wouldn't let that be too much of a hang up for you. I think you still need to spend the time and really perfect that essay when you're presenting yourself to the admission office. Uh, what you don't want to do, you definitely don't want to go out there and, and purchase essays that somebody else has used or uh, plagiarize or take information from the web um, and really just use that as your own essay. Uh, more and more colleges are actually going to different resources to look to see if there is any sort of plagiarism. I know there are universities that use turnitin.com to see if anybody has used an essay that's from another student. So that's something to think about. Um, so don't don't pay for those services um, because you will get caught and you don't want that to happen. Uh, use your own words. And I think that's true too. If you are going to use a quote for whatever reason you think it's extremely impactful and it really tells your story, make sure you do quote that person and don't use that person's word as your own words. Um, and the admission office will read the essays even if you do fall below a minimum uh, or an overall profile of the school. But as Peggy said, I, I can't really, I applaud for what Peggy said, I can't reiterate more that it is important that you really do your research and, and think about the schools um, that really fit your profile. Um, if you are in the bottom of your class, you have very weak SAT scores, you really haven't done anything from extracurricular activities, you don't really have impact, there's really no need to apply to a place where they admit less than 10% of the students um, because you really need to find that school that fits your profile that you have a better chance and put the time and effort into those applications to put yourself in the most competitive advantage when you are applying. Those are, those are really good questions. It's, uh, I'm, I'm glad to see you, you all thinking about what should my voice be? How do I represent myself well? And humor, if you are naturally funny, go for it, but run it by a trusted adult. Get your, a teacher or a school counselor to read it because you're, make sure that your sense of humor is appropriate and that it conveys the message that you want it to convey. 
but sometimes a good essay will make me laugh out loud. Um, but again, make sure that you run your humor by others. It, the language of the essay is informal because it's a speaking voice, but it's not as informal as hanging out with your buddies and speaking. So there's, there's kind of a line there that you don't want to cross. You want to write in a respectful but informal tone. Remember you're writing in the first person, which is by its very nature informal. And out of the box, um, again, that's kind of like humor. I love out of the box essays as long as they're appropriate and show me, and remember it's not just writing an essay that's fun to read because an essay that's fun to read isn't going to help you if it doesn't serve as that interview of you that Bob was talking about. So sure, outside of the box, if you're an outside of the box person, and if it shows something about you that will really make you a good fit for the college environment, but again, run it by a trusted adult and make sure that it's working when read by an adult. Um, and then, Bob, you might even have some examples of things that have worked and not in your memory. You know, there's many essays that I recall. Um, you know, there are things I remember one student when I was at UNC Chapel Hill um, wrote basically a short play about Gangsters 2050. Um, and it was probably one of the goriest essays I ever remember reading. Um, but it actually worked for the student, and it was comical, and uh, it just showed a different perspective to what the student was thinking about. Um, I remember last year reading an essay about a student talking about the third grade class that he was working with and how the students were running around the classroom and doing goofy things and thinking to himself and just thinking how he looked as he was just standing there doing nothing as these kids were running all around him. Um, and so there was some humor there, but it really told a story. Uh, I, I think you, you want to sort of stay safe uh, and don't go too far out of the lines um, because you are applying and it's taking this process seriously. Um, but if you do have some humor and you want to put that into the essay to really show your personality, I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, you know, I think of a student that applied to Stanford two years ago and um, was writing a letter to his future college roommate and he was talking about all the different things that he was going to bring uh, and he was actually a student who was wheelchair bound uh, and said don't worry about me I'm going to be bringing extra uh, wheelchairs with me one for the bathroom one for the bedroom one for going to class and he's like don't worry about me I'll take care of myself um, and just really told this interesting story about himself and just really who he was and just you could just feel the student as if he were sitting in the room right next to you uh, and so, you know, he was adding in humor about his disability, uh, but it worked uh, because he was just really telling the story from his own perspective. So, again, I think it's absolutely okay. Um, don't try to be funny if you're not normally funny because it'll never work. Well, <clears throat> I think it comes down to it depends, um, which is uh, when I teach how to be a college counselor at UC Berkeley, that's often our answer to questions. In terms of diversity or ethnicity, remember that is a shared experience. Many others have had the experience of being um, diversity or moving to a new culture. So you have to find your voice and your experience of that and if you're going to write about that, what about 
who you are are you going to show through that are you going to show your that you're like really able to adapt to a new environment are you going to show your maturity your responsibility so I think in some respects at least in California where I live and I would think in terms of colleges receiving applications uh, diversity and ethnicity are shared experiences on the other hand you often can use that experience of ethnicity or diversity to really give a sense of who you are as a wonderful human being. So it, it just depends on what you do with it. Um, I, I don't know about um, drawing pictures. I, uh, I don't know that you can do that in the current online common application. If you are a talented artist, there are many colleges allow you to upload a portfolio. Um, I would imagine that if you were really good, you could write a poem that showed the college what you wanted it to learn about you. I think those come under the heading of outside the box, and you have to be very genuine and very good at it to take that kind of a risk. So I would hope that you would um, check with your school counselor and see whether it's working. And the graphics one really puzzles me. Bob, what, what would you say about that? The graphics one. Is that what you're saying, Peggy? Yes, this, the student wants to know whether they could include graphics, and I'm not even sure that you can do that in the world of online applications these days. Yeah, so you really can't do that in the world of online applications. However, you know, some students will send in additional pieces of information. I remember at every school that I worked, we would have bins of portfolios that students would send. Um, art portfolios, pictures that they've taken, um, CDs of their band or of um, some concert performance. Uh, those things are, are okay. I would definitely check with the admission office to see if it's even going to be reviewed because at many of the institutions that I worked at where it was not required, it wasn't even looked at and we didn't even review them. And to be honest with you, some of the times uh, we would actually just look through that information over the winter break when we were sitting there opening mail um, and it never actually got tied to the application. So do your homework and ask the admission office first if they will look at that because if they do then it's worthwhile to send that information. Um, if they don't you may not want to send it and save your money um, in postage and printing and everything else that's associated with it for something else. Um, the other question that was asked was about academics and is it okay to talk about academics. Um, I, I think it is okay to talk about academics. If there is something that you want to bring to light about your academic record, uh, maybe there was a blip in your academic record in the 10th grade year because of something that had happened at home, um, or there's one student I remember uh, that I was working with last year that was talking about in his 10th grade he had sleep apnea and really wasn't diagnosed um, until later in the sophomore year. And then in his junior year, he was able to turn around his grades because um, the issue was addressed and he ended up sleeping with a BiPAP machine so he could sleep through the entire year, or not through the entire year, through the entire night, um, and actually picked up his grades. And so if you're going to do something like that, I think it's very important. My old boss at UC Berkeley used to always say, um, you want to make sure that you explain the situation and you don't complain about the situation. So when you get into the complaining piece, it's almost as if you're making excuses. But if you're explaining what happened, you're just telling the admission office, this is exactly what happened, this is how the issue was addressed, and then I moved on. And rather than complaining about the teacher who was really hard and gave you a C, um, more so you want to explain about what you did to rectify that C and what did you do to um, seek after school help, um, find a tutor, work with your classmates, so on and so forth. So again, if you're going to address any academic issues, make sure you explain and you don't complain. Now another, another possible academic essay would be to write about this really exciting project that you did for a class and how you got involved and you went to the nearby university library. So yes, writing about academic passion and showing what you did with that is certainly um, also acceptable. Colleges are, are, are obviously admitting students and intellectual curiosity is highly valued. And then for the student who said, when should you start? I like for students to start in the summer between the junior and senior year. The stories that they write then might not be what they want to write come fall, but they've had practice with the first person writing. 
if you are right a senior right now, I would say tonight is not too soon to get started writing.